Welcome to the second part of when one number is near 100. Um, in this part we're going to look at the subtraction questions. Now before we do anything, I want you to think to yourself, or remember this, that subtraction is not the same as addition, so the method that we use for addition, we can't just use straight away for subtraction because they are different. Let's look at an easy example to start with. Now, in addition we used counters and we were moving some counters from one pile to another, but in this lesson I want to think about a number line. So I've got 15 on it and I've got 9 on it. Now in subtraction I'm trying to find the distance between these two numbers. Now I think to myself, this question could be a lot easier if this number here was actually a tiny number. Let's say it was 10. Now to change it into 10, I've made it made the 9 one bigger. But here's the problem, you can see that the distance between the 9 and the 15 is not the same as the distance between the 10 and the 15. The distance here is now shorter. So the only way to keep that distance th the same is to make the 15 also one bigger. So the 15 would become 16. So you can see the distance between 9 and 15 is exactly the same as the distance between 10 and 16. And we're going to use this idea to help us answer uh, the questions in this lesson. So I'll just record over here what we did. We changed the 9 into a 10 by adding 1. And to keep that distance between the two numbers the same, I had to make the 15 one bigger. So the 15 became 16. 16 minus 10 is 6. So 15 minus 9 is also 6. Let's try another one with uh, some numbers closer to 100. Let's try this one. 173 uh, minus 98. Now I think to myself, wouldn't it be easier if the 98 actually was 100? So how would I have done that? Well, I imagined moving the 98, 98 up 2 to get to 100. But the, that means at the moment, the gap has got smaller. The gap between 100 and 173 is not the same as the gap between 98 and 173. So the only way to keep that sort of distance the same is to also add 2 to this number here. So 173 plus 2 becomes 175. So I've now got two questions where the distance between these numbers and the distance between these numbers is exactly the same. But obviously, it's a little bit easier to answer this question here. 175 minus 100 is 75. So 173 minus 98 is also 75. Let's have a look at uh, this question here. Uh, 167 minus 101. So I'm imagining both these amounts under a number line. And I'm thinking, wouldn't it be easier if that 101 actually was 100? So to imagine that, I'd have to move that 101 down one on my number line, so it becomes 100. Now, if I want to keep that distance the same, I'm also going to have to move my 167 down one. So that would become oops, 166. 166 minus 100 equals 66, which means 167 minus 101 equals 66. Now let's just have a look at what we've been doing in this lesson so far. In this question over here, we made this number 2 bigger, and we made this number 2 bigger. That way we get the gap the same. And in this question over here, we made this number 1 smaller, and this number 1 smaller, so we still keep the gap the same. The key to this lesson is that you're doing the same to both of these numbers so that you can end up with a question which is easier to answer but where the distance between the two numbers is exactly the same as the distance between the two numbers you started with. Let's do one last uh, question quickly. Let's do 151 minus 99. Just like last time, I'm thinking of a tidy number which is close to 99 which is 100, and to change it into 100 I have to add 1, which means if I want to keep the gap at 
between these numbers the same, I'm also going to have to add 1 to this one here, to 151. So 151 will become 152. So the distance between these two numbers is the same as the distance between these two numbers. But this question is much easier to answer. 152 minus 100 is 52. So 151 minus 99 is also 52. Maybe the last thing to think about is, you've noticed that in all of my examples, I've been changing this second number here. Now, you'd still get the right answer if you ended up changing these first numbers, but it's much, much easier to take away a tidy number than to start with a tidy number. Try some of the examples and you'll be able to see that yourself. I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you need any more help, check out teachertools.co.nz.